Payback Dizzle. It's good to see you, brother. How are you doing? Good, man. How are you doing, Zeb? Oh, uh, you know, it's just good to see you and good to talk to you yeah. and, and, and know you're back in wrestling. I feel better yep. about that, right? Took a little hiatus there. You were on, you were George Mason last year, yep. right? And then you went into the real world for a little, you still are in the real world, right? Yeah, I transitioned right back into Quest. Literally the weekend I moved back, I was in the room on Sunday. That's awesome, man. So you didn't even miss a beat. No, never have. So same, four, same 48 thing. hours. Yeah. And you lived in like a closet in D.C., right? Yeah, so the first apartment I had in Falls Church, uh, me and Joey Moon got us at UNC. Uh, yeah, I, it was that one was a shoebox. Then I had a house with uh, two of my buddies, the, one of the athletic trainers at Mason, and just one of our friends. So that was better, but... It ain't cheap. Space ain't cheap down there. No, it's not, right? But now you're back home, you know, right, yeah. right around Pittsburgh. Where do you actually live? Uh, so I live about 40 minutes west of Pittsburgh. Um, I'm staying with my dad and my stepmom. Okay. Saving some money for winter. I would stay there forever. Listen, it's, I own a couple houses. Don't do it. Hey, they Don't got, do it. They got like 85 acres out in the middle of the woods, man. It's good living. That's awesome. So yeah, I live out there. I work right in downtown Pittsburgh, so it's good. Okay, you guys just knocked off Team Palmer. Yep. Right? And um, Quest, I mean, you guys have had some absolute wars today. Yeah. You guys in West Shore was a war. Yep. Then the Nashville team, that was a war. Yeah, they got a good team, man. A real good team, right? Yeah, are you? How impressed are you by defense soap duels and the, the level of competition here? It's awesome. Uh, first time I've ever been here, I knew it was a great time tournament everything but you know the defense so people say goes and everybody um, I'm not 100% sure who's the director but they put an awesome event together it's nice for us because we're not that far you know Cleveland's only two two and a half hours for us probably, probably about two um, so it's pretty close you get some awesome wrestling you know like the Nashville team it's great to see number one it's always good to see you know wrestling growing in the south but they're doing an awesome job um, I think most of it's Nashville Catholic great right? so the event's great. Um, it's very well run. So whole thing's good. Okay, so you know, like you're supposed. If this like duel starts behind us, you, you got to tell me so we can cut the interview short, right? Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. That's why you're there. You're looking. Are you looking? Are you looking yeah. over there? Okay. So Coach Akerley, you guys at Quest, tell me what it's like coaching with them. What it's like coming back, going from college guys, mm -hmm. and you know, you guys they were building something really special there. I saw yeah. George Mason last night, but like. Going from college, guys, now down to, like, middle school youth kids and, and coaching club. What's that like, that transition? Yeah, it's different, um, obviously, you know, in a lot of ways for a variety of reasons. So, you know, the obvious is you don't, you don't recruit, you, do any, you don't do anything like that, right? You don't handle anything outside of wrestling. Obviously, you help the kids grow up, you know, you stay in touch with their academics, make sure the kids are doing the right things all the way through elementary, junior high, and high school, you know, and... Um, so you make sure to stay in tune with what's going on in their lives, right? Because coaching is, in the grander scheme, it's about making good young adults. You know, it's helping these kids grow up into good people that have opportunities in life, right? You try to help, help open doors. But coaching with Jim is unbelievable. You know, I grew up as one of eight of these kids um, at Quest, so coaching alongside of him is, is awesome. Uh, I can't believe he still puts up with me. I talk so much, and he just doesn't. And he had to listen to me growing up, and now he listens to me every night at practice. So. But it's awesome, man. And Jim is, he's one of the most underappreciated, just kind of talked about coaches at the club level, um, honestly, in the country. You know, you ever get a chance to come into our room, uh, anytime we have a guy that graduates and wrestles in college, they have you know, a plaque with their name, uh, career record and everything from high school and a hat from where they went to college right so there's a hat wall in the question you come in and you look at the names and you see the hats on the wall right and people start to get an understanding of how much he's done i mean that's a guy that was a division one coach for over a decade a head coach at american that you know won conference coach of the year a couple times so he's a great person great person to learn from in and out of wrestling okay so i always uh joke that i'm stealing all your content <laughs> You ever see that? I'm like, yeah, I just copy yeah. and paste all this Absolutely. content, right? Because you're right a lot, I think. I mean, that's my opinion, right? I mean, we may not agree on a lot of stuff, but, like, you're right a lot, right? Um, being in the media, like, you do some media stuff, right? Yeah. Kind of on the side. Yep. But, like, you dabble, yeah. right? It's like a, yeah, a part-time thing. But what do you do for real? What's your real job? So I work for UPMC, the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, um, in the supply chain management department. Um, so I'm a buyer for them, um, do all, all sorts of different stuff with bill only and consignment, um, both purchasing, managing, the procure pay process, and then the team that I'm on, we do some different uh, process improvement things. So it's good. Um, I'm a nerd at heart, to be honest with you, so I love it. Um, it's a great company. You know, UPMC is the hospital system that you know, saved my mother's life when she went through cancer treatment a couple of times so um, 
great organization. I, the people I work with are awesome, so I love it. It keeps me busy. Okay, last thing. Is it, I mean, you live in a closet, you make like 30,000 bucks a year, but you're coaching wrestling compared to like real world. Is wrestling really worth it? And are a lot of some of these people like they can't do what you do. You're like a real, you're versatile. You could go sell widgets to or <laughs> you know, ice to an Eskimo, whatever. I mean, you could do that. A lot of people in wrestling really struggle with that. They don't. They don't want to leave wrestling, and they'll hang on to bad situations yeah. and to making thirty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. How easy is it for you to transition to it? And, and you know what I mean. Like a lot of people just they just won't let go. Right. They'll, they'll take twenty thousand dollars of your job. So I, you know, I, there's a lot to it for me personally. I'm. I was very fortunate with the people that I was surrounded by. I still am surrounded by my family, Coach Aikley, my high school coaches, everybody. Um, there was always the clear understanding that life is way bigger than wrestling. You know, wrestling's a whole lot of fun, and it's obviously what I love to do, um, especially coaching, but it, it's not the be-all, end-all, right? So I think one of the biggest disservices that we as a sport, not just wrestling, I think sports in general can have a tendency to do this. You know, but especially wrestling, we take so much pride in being so tough, being hard workers, being blue collar and all these things, right? Which is all very true. You know, the quote of once you've wrestled everything else in life is easy. Well, that that isn't and isn't true. You understand the work ethic, you understand the fight, but if you don't put time in to develop yourself as a person outside of the wrestling, then you're going to be, you're going to pigeonhole yourself into wrestling. And like you said, you can potentially end up in bad situations because you didn't develop yourself around it. So that's like, and I mentioned it earlier, that's on us as coaches. We have to make sure that these kids, these young adults, they understand all of the stuff that goes around wrestling because life is so much bigger. You know that. I mean, you're a father. Like, you get, you understand how much bigger life is than this stuff. And don't get me wrong, this is a blast. I love doing this. But, so for me, transitioning, um, not, not hard at all, to be honest. I'm, I've always been pretty good at compartmentalizing things and just be where your feet are, right? Be where your feet are. You know, when I'm at work, I'm at work. When I'm... At, you know, when I'm at Quest, I'm at Quest, right? When I'm here, I'm here. When I'm with my family, I'm with my family. When I'm with my girlfriend, I'm with my girlfriend. It, you got to be where you are and um, transition from one thing to another. For me, I mean, you know me well enough. I'm an extremely competitive person. Whatever I do, I want to be good at it, man. So as soon as I go back into the corporate world, I'm like, hey, I want to be the best. I, I want to be the best guy in America. I want to be the best guy in the world. This. Same way, you know, it's the same attitude that I approach everything academically, athletically, with, and I think that's where you can teach those great life lessons and those things that you carry through life, through sports, if you focus it on, hey, you learn to handle a person, you learn to do all those things upstairs, right, you learn mental toughness, you, you know, all these different things to help you get through and cope with and, and have a successful life instead of just, hey, you learn single legs, hey, you learn high crotch, like whatever, right, um, so the transition wasn't hard at all, again, I'm a nerd, so I enjoy it, um, and I stay busy, man, between coaching, uh, working, obviously, and then the stuff I do with Jude, Sam, and uh, Tony Rotundo at Home at Advantage. Um, and, and I got to give them a shout out. They're awesome. They, you know, thankful that they trusted me to be part of it. Um, it's fun because I can just kind of, you know, I kind of look at almost as like blogging. I just write about whatever I want to write about. And what I like is that not many of us that are former athletes, you know, I was extremely fortunate with the things that the way my career played out you know I got really lucky with the way things worked out for me so um, I feel like I kind of have a perspective especially coming through a powerhouse high school program in Pennsylvania you know the people I was surrounded by Lehigh and the gym and everything the fun part for me is giving people a different perspective right you don't often see former athletes really go wide open publicly and talk about their perspective on what's happening in college wrestling what's happening in sports why why the round of 12 in NCAAs is an emotional freaking nightmare in a lot of ways. Right? So, like, you know, I hear people, like, that diminish, like, someone's not an All-American. Yeah. We have, like, members of the media who, like, like they treat people like that. Like, they, they act like they're almost like gum on the bottom of their shoes. It's, it's bizarre to me. Because I, I was a 500 college wrestler. I was, like, 60 and 58 and Gold at Kent State, right? Gold yeah, Blackie, right? Baby. But, like, I was an average guy. I didn't right. make the NCAA tournament. But I, like, get it as much as anyone I'd like to think, right? I would but I really right. don't get the disappointment of losing the round of 12. I don't, I don't get that. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Well, right. It's just, and again, you know, we talked about this a little bit earlier. It's the same as like, I don't understand the excitement of when when you, your child is born, right? Like there are just certain things that unless you've lived through it, you don't understand it, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make anybody, doesn't make them good, bad, or in between. It's just, you don't understand, you don't have the firsthand experience because you don't have the firsthand experience, right? Yeah, your, your bookend years. Like I look at your bookend years, your yep. freshman year and your senior year. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are obviously pretty disappointing years. Yeah. Started sure. out of 25 your freshman year, and it wasn't the way you went up, right? Yep. yep. Right? That's right. That's what yeah. happened. And then yeah, senior year, yep. senior year, the struggles, right? Yeah. You, you were just trying to be on the mat. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, right? You couldn't even do that very well, right? No. It was hard, wasn't it? Yeah, my senior year was hard, man. I, you know, I, uh, and actually, so Mackenzie Pavichish, who, uh, Zach Nybert's fiance, you know, she w was involved in the wrestling program at Virginia Tech. She's in graduate school for, she actually just graduated grad school at Arizona State for journalism, but she just wrote an article and it talked about. Are we still good over here? Yeah, by the yeah. Way? Okay, I don't yeah. want to interrupt you. No, you're fine. We talk, and, and it talks about the mental, you know, mental health and all the stuff that, you know, that depression's a real thing in our sport, not just our sport, but it uses wrestling as the lens, right? And, you know, Ryan Melhoff and Kyle Canal and all these different people open up about their experiences. I mean, that was what happened to me my senior year. Um, you know, there were causes in the background that, you know, don't really need to be discussed, but, you know, that was, so it was frustrating. But again, that goes back to the support system and the lessons that you learn through wrestling of, it takes a village to raise a child, right? And they help me through it. And you know, the biggest lesson of that was you learn to be vulnerable. You learn to let people in um, and help. But yeah, so, and then my freshman year, just, Eight. Wrong weight. You're at the wrong weight. I was kind of a tweener. You know, I could have cut the weight better for 25, no doubt. Um, but I was still growing, and uh, it just was what it was. And even, like I said, when I was at 33, I was still kind of a tweener. I wasn't a real big 33. Um, you know, I took the red shirt year, the, my second year at Lehigh, to build into 33. And, um, I mean, you're a two-time All-American. I don't know about anybody. I mean, some people don't know that. There's only everybody worry yeah, about the national matter. chance or national. Yeah. You're a two-time All-American. It's incredible. Yeah, I you take was, eight in the top eight yep. twice. Yep. Right, where were your two placements? Sixth, both. I mean, that's better than a sharp stick in the eye. <laughs> yeah, again. Would you I, agree with that? Yeah, I would, and again, it's funny. The more separation I get from them, from it, the more. Not that I wasn't fortunate at the time. Don't get me wrong. Being on the podium is an extremely special thing, and I'm was really thankful for the way things played out. Man, I got really lucky. Just and, I, and when I say I got lucky, you know, don't get me wrong. I put a lot of hours, and I worked really hard, but. Again, it takes a village, and the village that I had from literally day one with my dad, with my family, with the Reynolds program, with the Quest program, then, you know, then at Lehigh, obviously, I was just surrounded by really great people, and they made it really easy for me to just, hey, if you just go run through that wall we tell you to run through, you'll get there, right? Um, you know, and I trusted and believed in the people around me, so yeah. Um, but to your earlier point about people losing, you know, losing credibility because they weren't an All-American or weren't a national champ. Look, man, I, I've seen some. Uh, you know, I've seen some of the most incredible wrestlers I've ever watched that couldn't coach and really weren't great wrestling minds. The flip side of it is some of the best coaches in high school. I mean, use Jeff Buxton, right? Jeff Buxton is arguably the best high school coach in American wrestling history, right? You know, Buck's incredible, and he's. I'm sure you've talked to him. He's an unbelievable, unbelievably bright wrestling mind. You know, Buck. He's not a guy that went and won NCAA titles. You know, he's a, you know, when I ask you about Jeff Buxton's wrestling career, you probably sit and go back and, you know, I don't know a whole lot about it, right? I know I, until I sat down and talked to him for about an hour one day after practice, you know, when he was our RTC coach, I didn't know about it. You know, I didn't know much about him, but I knew him as the coach, right? So, um, you know, and as far as um, anybody in the media or anybody in general, if you got a platform and you're talking down to people or whatever else because they didn't place the NCAA tournament or whatever, yeah. It's just unfortunate. It's the only word I can use. It's unfortunate because we got a great community in our sport. We got great people. It's one of the big things that I love the most about the wrestling world, man. It's like friend, relationships, like the one I have with you, man. We got we got a great friendship, and we're really thankful for it. Um, it's just unfortunate when somebody gets a platform, or there's a situation where you know, and it, it's not just members of the media. Everybody, does. All, all, not everybody, a lot of people do that. You know, they look at parents will look at uh, somebody that comes in. You know where they're looking at their kid going to school or what club they want to go to and they say well he wasn't a national champ or he wasn't this it doesn't matter how good are the coaches right and, and more importantly right you should want your kids to be surrounded by good people um you know, I, I know that it's kind of a tangent but that whole anytime that happens it's just deeply unfortunate in my eyes all right do you, do you have anything else for me no man you got me uh, fired up let's just go that way we're gonna go that way all right Hey, I'm always fired up. You know me. I'm fired up. And you know I love to talk. I think we're clearing out here. Clearing out. We're getting ready. You guys got, uh, who do you got now? You got Indianapolis Compound. I love that you don't know that. All right. Hey, thanks for the time. Hey, thank you, brother. Keep it up, buddy. It's always great talking to you. And we might have to collaborate on something. I don't know. I'm all in. Let me know. I don't, feel, I don't like being the dumbest guy in the room, though, so maybe I won't. I want to feel well, that, that's why you got to keep me with you. You're smarter than I am. Come on. That's, that's, <laughs> it was the opposite. It was the opposite. You knew what I meant. All right. Hey, thanks for the time, buddy. Absolutely. Hey, defend what you built, by the way. Defend what you build, all right? Beautiful. Hey, we're big. Quest School of Wrestling. Big defense soap guys. There you go. Big defense soap people. Yeah, I don't even. You know I'm a plug man for them, right? You know That's that. Okay. Come on. I mean, you've seen the thing. Come on. But hey, you got some soap. 
Yeah. Defend what you built. Go. Oh, look at you. You just pulled that out of your pocket. Stay ready. All right. Yeah, you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. Yeah, that's a John Hughes line. Yes, yeah, sir. Later.